Well, let's quickly go through our agenda. I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes uh, clarifying what I mean by this 90% syndrome. That may be a term uh, familiar to a lot of people, but not necessarily everyone. So we'll spend a, just a minute defining what I mean by that. Uh, and then we're going to spend some time getting into what causes this phenomenon, and then uh, the bulk of the webinar will deal with how you can prevent uh, this kind of thing from arising in the first place. So, what is it? Well, you might have been involved in a conversation like this or heard one or observed one. Uh, you know, last week the boss comes in as usual, so how are we doing? What's the status? Uh, the PM might say something like, well, we're feeling pretty good about how we're, how it's coming along. We think we're about, uh, about 90% there. And then, lo and behold, the next week, uh, comes along this week. The boss comes back, same questions again, how are we doing, what's the status? And the response might be something like, well, we found a couple of problems, but they're almost fixed. So we're real close to 90% done. Um, and then um, the following week, the boss comes back again, how are we doing, what's the status? Uh, and we might uh, find ourselves in a similar position, you know, maybe mumble, mumble. Uh, we found a few more issues. Uh, we're working on them, but we're not quite sure when they're going to be resolved. Now, this is a pattern we maybe have seen, you've seen, I've certainly seen this many, many times. Uh, we get into a situation where we're, we think we're 90% complete, but that status goes on for week after week after week, sometimes month after month. I've seen projects where 90% syndrome went on for more than a year. So that's basically what I mean by it. It's a situation where uh, we we find late in a project that we are not as far along as we thought we were. Unexpected problems arise. Uh, this is a very, very common occurrence in many, many software projects. So what causes this? Uh, in the first place, I think one of the major factors is that we, many cases, we really don't do an adequate job of sizing uh, the work to be done. And so it, particularly this is important here in the medium and larger size projects. A medium project might be something like, uh, say, a 1,000 function points, if you're familiar with that, that measure of size, uh, or uh, it might be a project that's going to take a year and maybe has eight or ten people involved in it. Uh, maybe it's going to cost something in the order of a million dollars. That would be something that would fall into the medium category. There's a lot of those kinds of projects around. Uh, as you can see from this chart, cancellation probability for uh, projects of that size is in the area of 20 percent. We get into larger systems, which means 10,000 function points uh, and up. Uh, probability of failure or probability of cancellation uh, essentially doubles. Uh, if you get into very, very large projects, uh, which most of us never do, there's only a few organizations that uh, undertake these kinds of things. These are things like air traffic control systems and operating systems and, uh, you know, military systems of various kinds. Most of us aren't working in that domain. So our focus today is going to be largely around the medium, uh, primarily around the medium and large uh, scale projects. Uh, as we see here, the small projects, those, uh, say, that are well under 1,000 function points, don't pose such significant risk. Most organizations can do those successfully without getting into too much trouble. But in these bigger ones, uh, frequently we start off with uh, an inadequate understanding of how big it really is. It turns out later on we discover it's a lot bigger than we thought. Um, there is a, uh, there's a closely related problem which is in part caused by a lack of sizing, and that is unrealistic estimates. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've gotten involved in a, <clears throat> a number of um, runaway project uh, assessment turnaround kinds of situations, and I found that 80% of the time at least, uh, one of the root cause problems is that the team started off with an estimate that never had any chance to be met. They were, in effect, trying to put five pounds of sand in the, in the uh, proverbial three-pound bag, and uh, they, you know, got a ways into the project, maybe a quarter of the way or half the way into the project, and, and realized that their estimate is way, way off, 
And so they start to do what I call unnatural acts, and by that I mean that they take start start taking uh, shortcuts that everybody knows aren't a good idea. You know, we start skipping review meetings. We start, uh, uh, you know, cloning things that aren't really uh, aren't really solid, and uh, so we just make our we dig ourselves uh, deeper into a mess. Uh, another um, another factor is inadequate planning, and basically that means that we haven't planned in enough detail. Uh, a a well-thought-out plan uh, is going to have uh, tests broken down probably into no more than a week in duration, two weeks at the most, might be a rolling wave kind of plan, but at least for the next three or four or five or six months, we've got a good amount of detail. Another thing that's inadequate in most plans, rarely do I see plans that explicitly identify how much time and effort is going to be devoted to appraisal. By appraisal, I mean any kind of activity that we do to find defects. So that could be various kinds of reviews or walkthroughs or formal inspections and, of course, any kind of testing that we might plan to do. You know, testing is usually planned pretty well, but rarely do I see uh, in the early phases that there, there's explicit uh, time allocated uh, to finding defects before we even get to the testing effort. Unfortunately, most organizations don't do near enough of that. As we'll see later on, there's huge leverage if you do more. And the other thing that's usually not explicitly planned is rework. And, of course, we know there is a significant amount of rework uh, involved in every software project, Indeed, the the numbers for appraisal and rework are really kind of scary. We'll see some we'll see some benchmark data a little bit later in this in this presentation, but they're big numbers. When they're not explicitly planned, that leads us to uh, being more optimistic than we should be, uh, and contributes to one of the root causes of this 90% syndrome. An additional item is that we don't do sufficient uh, defect containment prior to uh, testing. So uh, we have a misleading uh, idea of where we stand. We think because a deliverable has ostensibly been completed uh, that it that reflects uh, something, uh, you know, proportionate in our status. But, of course, if something's been completed and is full of defects, it really isn't completed. We're going to have to find and fix those defects uh, eventually. And most projects don't put in nearly as much effort before testing uh, on effort into finding and fixing defects as uh, as should be the case. And again, we're going to look at that more uh, more thoroughly uh, later in the presentation, and we'll we'll actually quantify what the effect is if you do or you don't uh, devote sufficient effort to finding defects before testing. Finally, uh, and I sort of alluded to this, but uh, when we don't do enough defect tracking early, we end up producing misleading status tracking. And it's not kind of deliberate, and we're not, uh, you know, no, we're not withholding information. We're just not looking at it in the right way. If, for example, uh, you had planned three months of effort to do design work, let's suppose, and indeed after three months the design is completed, so you go on and start doing construction. Well, that's all fine and well, but if you didn't devote time to finding the defects that were in the design, and we'll see some benchmark data later, there's a significant number of defects typically in the design. But if we didn't spend enough time finding and fixing those defects, then we have just pushed part of the problem downstream. So we've claimed credit for being 100% complete with design, when in actual fact, objectively seen, we're not 